On today's try to finish something, wow, I really need a shave and a haircut. I, I just haven't had any time. It hasn't been a priority. But one of the things that has been a priority for me, sorry, that was a, a terrible radio segue. It's years of being a DJ, but it was nice, huh? One of the things that has been a priority for me is the Praise Kelechi Maker Fund. I'll put the details again in the description of this video. He's a young maker out of Nigeria who does cosplay stuff and is an amazing artist who has very little supplies. And he does it all with just some basic paints and construction paper and cardboard. And I thought that it'd be neat if we as a community could band together and get him some supplies to see what this young artist could do. Again, he's out of Nigeria and I had reached out to him to see why I hadn't seen a lot of new stuff on social media. And he said it's because he hasn't been feeling well. He's sick because he's awaiting a transplant. I didn't get a lot of detail, I didn't ask a lot of questions, but I have a feeling that if we could put together some sort of fun, if you can donate anything, whether it's $5 or $10, I, I have a feeling that he and his family would be very appreciative of anything that you can give. And I'll leave that GoFundMe page open for a little bit longer. Again, the Praise Kelechi Maker Fund, details in the description of this video. But I've been watching in the nerd groups, a lot of the people have been making a lot of lighting setups for their Star Wars rooms and their maker spaces. And I have terrible lighting in my maker space, in my craft room. Um, I have what looks like a fixture that somebody stole from a gas station bathroom with one of those curly Q, curly Q, it's a really hard word to say. Curly Q, <laughs> I'm never gonna get it out. That curly Q fluorescent bulb stuck in it. Yes, I'll edit that out, you'll never notice it. But that's all I have in there. I also have some natural light from a window, but I am sorely lacking on lighting. And when I was visiting Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland, I saw they had all those droid head lights and stuff hanging in that one area. And it's inspired me to make a desk lamp so I can have some targeted light in specific areas. And I'm going to make a droid desk lamp for my Star Wars craft room. And that's what I'm going to do on today's Try to Finish Something. So this should be a very simple project that anyone can do without any sort of fancy tools, 3D printers, laser cutters, or any of that. I bought this Renarp, Renarp? I, I don't know, I, I assume that's how you say it, desk lamp from Ikea and had it delivered. I chose this particular lamp because it kind of had more of an industrial look, but you should be able to use any lamp that you like as long as the lampshade part can be detached. I guess you could even do it with one that wouldn't detach. It would just be a whole lot more work to get it to the bare bones. Huh. I hope this one detaches easily. It's in more pieces than I thought it was going to be, but let's assemble this IKEA desk lamp the way it's supposed to be done. I'm not 100% sure the order of steps and how it's supposed to be put together, and there is absolutely no way that I am even looking at those instructions. It's a lamp, come on. How hard could this be? Okay, now it's all together, and it wasn't hard. I have to figure out what I will replace the lampshade with. I have this R5 droid head I purchased while at Galaxy's Edge in Disneyland, but I've also seen them online at places like eBay for $10 each. So if you want to do this using the same parts, you should be able to find one really, really easily. But I'm still not sure that this head is what I'm going to be using. Let me take the shade off and figure out my game plan. I'm not sure if I have to unscrew this top or if that's even a screw. And it's not. These are just pressure fit on there? Yep, they are. Why do I try and make things harder than they need to be? Okay, so the inside of this droid head has this electrical connection for the toy, and I will need to remove that and then drill out the head to accept this pre-wired lamp socket. Or I could use one of these BB body halves that I bought. Uh, 
I think I like the head better. I could use a body half, but then I would want to spend a bunch of time to make it actually look like a head when I already have droid heads. Ooh, I also have this jet engine burner can that I bought on eBay that I want to use for something. It's not the actual official IG burner can, but I want to make it look like an IG head from the shows, but it might make a good light. I think it's going to be too heavy and too much metal drilling. I should stick with the R5 unit. Ooh, or I bought this R2 clear head. Okay, look, I'm getting sidetracked again. I'm sticking with the black R5 head. This is why my projects take me so long to do on the back end. All right, I'm gonna start with a step bit in my drill to see if I can open up the head just a bit. This isn't working great at all. I thought the bit would keep the hole centered, but as that bit spins and heats up, the bit wanders in the plastic as it melts and crap. Okay, so I'm going to mark out how much I need to remove. Now, I wanna really sneak up on this and not make it too big. I would like this to fit as tight as I can so as not to have too much light leak through the top and I want it to be a pressure fit if possible. So, on to the Dremel. Sand and check. Sand and check. Sand and check. Did I mention I'm sanding and checking over and over? I want to keep these inner wires intact as much as possible since I think they would actually look good hanging out of the top of the light. Ooh, look at that. That's a really good fit. Now, if you try this same project at home using the exact same parts, there is an inner circle raised ring on the inside of this droid head and the lamp fixture is almost the exact same size as that and use that for reference. All right, I'm gonna clean up the edges a bit with some sandpaper and rough up these wires. Now I'm gonna put a cutting bit into my Dremel and I want an exposed part of an electrical panel so I'm gonna cut out a rough shape on the side. sand that, and then I will create some damage here and there using the same Dremel bit. Remember, this is a salvage droid head, so it's badly damaged and has some scars. I went over to my Power Droid Greebly holder and found this little small circuit board. By the way, the name that Black Market Outpost suggested for my Power Droid, Gronky Kong? Come on, Gronky Kong? That is outstanding. Anyway, I'm going to mix up a bit of two-part epoxy, JB Weld, and attach the circuit board to the inside. I'll just dab a bit on a few spots and clamp it and let it set. I think the light on the back side of this green board will look great and it will illuminate a bit. I'll do a bit more weathering. Cut the wires here and scrape up the surface with some sandpaper. I'm not even going to repaint this droid head. Like I said, I'm trying to keep this simple and show that anyone can do this. All right, on to the weathering. Water-based oils, brown and black. I have some dirty brushes sitting in some dirty water and they're brushes that I use just for weathering. So. Why make a dirty brush clean when I'm gonna keep using it just to make things dirty? You're following this, right? Anyway, normal routine. Lot on, wipe off.
mix the brown and black so you get different color variations and apply everywhere that dirt would settle. Looking at this, I think I want to add a little bit of rust. So I'm going to take some brown, orange, and yellow craft paint. I will mix a bit of orange and brown and dab that on with a brush as rough as possible in the areas where I want rust to be. This is supposed to be pretty faint and be the background to my rust. I'll also dab it off with a dry paper towel. Now I'm going to take a little bit of sponge with a tiny bit of orange, blot it off, and then create some orange spots on the faint areas where I want the rust. Then I'm going to do the exact same thing with yellow. Now I'm going to knock it down a bit. I will add some brown to the sponge and dab over that in some parts. I will finish that off later with some silver, but first a few drips and runs of rust. Okay, I'm almost there. I mixed a bit of turpentine with rub and buff and I'm taking a brush and adding some bare metal spots where the rust is. The parts where the paint has chipped all the way to the bare metal is where the rust would seem natural. I will also add a few scratches here and there. Okay, I, I've got to stop. I can do this weathering all day long. Here's a close-up of where we are. We're on the home stretch. We're almost done. Now it's just a matter of putting this all back together. And lastly, I'm going to weather the brass parts of the original lamp and I'm going to really water down some paints and weather the cord too. And here is what it looks like. Here it is with the light inside. I really like the way the light looks through some of the scars. Ooh, and through that circuit board. Huh? What do you think? Now I actually have enough light to turn this IG unit into a nurse droid. I'm going to leave you with a few close-ups, but I'm considering this Star Wars droid desk lamp finished. If you liked the video, please consider subscribing, sharing the video, and tell a friend. If you didn't, as always, just keep it to yourself. And we'll see you next time as we try to finish something.